Good afternoon. Hope everybody is enjoying lunch and that you've met at least one new person at your table. Uh, we are delighted to have you all here for CECP's eighth CEO Investor Forum. We just finished up two meetings earlier today, a CEO Board of Boards. Uh, we had about 50 CEOs from leading companies, closed door, talking about the role of business in society. And that was essentially a, a meeting a couple of years ago that sparked the CEO Investor Forum. We've now had eight, we do several of these uh, a year. In addition, this morning, I think we had about 40 companies or so who got together to talk about ESG metrics and what's kind of going on in that space. We had uh, folks from SASB and GRI there as well talking about those key areas. So we're really delighted to have you all here uh, for today's eighth CEO Investor Forum. I'd like to thank our sponsors, without whom this event would not be possible. So the good folks from KPMG, Stephen Brown, Lynn Dowdy, their CEO and chairman, folks from UBS, glad to have you all here, and also Walmart, the world's biggest company that has been a very major supporter as we get going on this whole area of this, this long-term uh, journey. Uh, we uh, also want to thank our, uh, our governance board. And we've brought together, I think, a world-class advisory board of investors, strategic investors, of issuers, companies, as well as the intermediaries, the professional service firms and media to bring this all together. And we really do appreciate their work in this journey over the last several years. Also like to thank our co-chairs who have made this event uh, really possible and have provided great leadership. Bill McNabb, the uh, former uh, chairman and CEO and still very active at Vanguard, sitting on a number of pump company boards. And also Alex Gorski, chairman and CEO of, of Johnson & Johnson. Alex, unfortunately, Alex's his dad passed away suddenly, uh, unexpectedly uh, over the last couple of days. He has not been able to, to join us. His dad, an amazing Vietnam veteran, uh, a Korean War veteran, Six kids live life to the fullest to the last minute. But we are delighted that uh, Joaquin uh, Duara uh, from J&J, their vice chair, and who runs the most profitable business at J&J, is, is with us to represent uh, that, 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 that great company. So thank you uh, for, for stepping in here. Uh, we are today facing a new normal in terms of business and its role in society. You all have read the stories, you've seen the papers talking about this whole area of business and sustainable business, what that means. We looked at uh, media mentions over the last six months in the world of business, and you see the business roundtable statement didn't exist before August of last year at the top of the list. CEOs, corporate social responsibility, these are topics on people's minds. And they're not only now just in the business media and conversations around our tables today, certainly a part of the discussions we had the morning with CEOs, but it's what citizens around the world are asking. And Richard Edelman of the eponymous Trust Barometer, three out of four citizens of the world who can't agree on the color of the sky at any given time, all are believe you know, that business can both make money and be a positive force, what we would call at CCP, a force for good. And when we talk about citizens around the globe, you know, they look at multiple stakeholders the companies need to be responsible for. Certainly, that includes investors who are investing over time. That's where the risk bearers are, that's where the money is. But you outperform, and the research results are ever clear. The outperform as you deal with those other stakeholders here is, as well. And we have Bob Eccles with us, one of the authors and the leaders in this field. It's just the importance here of really what we're kind of call, what we are calling stakeholder uh, capitalism. Now I know you're all eating, but I think you all have cell phones, your smartphones. I want you to pull them out, and we are going to uh, ask you a few polling questions. So we'd like to get insights from folks. You know, make sure your hands are dried off from any of the the, the, the chicken or anything else, and uh, go to Slido.com. All right, this is not an app. We tested that out in Iowa, didn't work so well. So we decided to go slide, it goes right to the cloud, slido.com, enter in the code CIF, which stands for CEO Investor Forum number eight, so CIF eight, right? And you should have a little green arrow. So everybody following? We have some millennials in the audience if you need help. 
help you to walk through these things, right? We have a team here who is ready to go. Get you on there, everybody good, sir? So we have a couple of questions come up. Um, so first question here, which you can read. Do you agree that companies are communicating their long-term business plans, addressing key stakeholder needs well? How well are companies doing? Do you agree that they're doing this very much agree, or do you, uh, which is a five, or if you, no, they're really not doing this, would be a one. So not doing it one, five if they're doing that very well. So everybody, you get some music? There we go, okay. Hopefully it is all right. Great, everybody have the answers in there. Good, thank you. So I think you get a sense here, uh, one being low, that there's a few, not anybody is yet saying companies are doing a great job on this. All right, so uh, a bunch in the okay, uh, a lot, you know, a little less than, than average. So uh, an opportunity for us. Next question. Oh, you guys have the questions. Would it influence the way you engage or vote the proxy with companies if you had long-term plans? So again, let's get the music on. You'll see the points here, strongly agree. Bring up the answers. All right. So we've got about uh, only 1% strongly disagreeing. What's that? 90, last year was 91%, so that number has actually gone up a little higher. 93% said that would change the way they think about dealing with companies from an engagement perspective, how they might vote the proxy. So with a group of investors, that's kind of a fascinating uh, uh, piece here. Our, our goal here, given that interest that we've heard about this new normal, given with what we've just seen from you all that people aren't doing it particularly that well, we would, would influence the way we think about engaging with companies. Uh, that's what we're here about at, at CECP with our CEO Investor Forum. Uh, this is our eighth edition. As I mentioned, it was sparked from our Board of Boards meeting a couple of years ago. Uh, it is, uh, we, today I think we'll be close to 40 CEOs who will have shared their plans. And this is how we're kind of market testing this solution for folks. You can see the numbers, trillions of dollars of companies market cap presenting plans, tens of trillions of assets under management uh, there. And we do have an online audience because we are Reg FD uh, in all of our communication. So you guys are all on TV. Right, or on webcast, so chew with your mouth closed, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we really want to make sure people are, um, are, are there because this is part of the conversation, right? As we had last time, we had, I think, 40 or 50 countries around the globe having people who were listening in, either in real time or after the fact. So we have this market tested uh, area, and we've learned a lot. That was our notion behind it in terms of the benefit for issuers to set the context of their communication, to own the narrative, to really tell their long term story as well as what investors are saying. And again, these are less the quarterly sell side analysts. These are investors, the buy side, who want to have strategic questions about stakeholders, ESG, capital allocation, financial expectations. Obviously, we are future focused and FD compliant and really want plans here that can be concise. Right? Many of our, our uh, index funds, people are covering hundreds of companies. We're looking for concise plans. You'll hear about those this afternoon. They need to be reasonably comparable. Uh, we have pulled together a, uh, a, a template based on the best practices in these and investor-based questions. Uh, and they want them connected. Connected both to the total organization. This is not a, uh, a sustainability report. That needs to be connected to your total business strategy and also connected to long-term value value that might not happen this quarter, but over time, we can see by investing in human capital, it's gonna allow us to outperform. We have a number of building blocks I'll come through in a second. Uh, but we also have pulled together some really strong executive ready research on why you should share a long-term plan, what should be in that plan, and it comes from investor questions, when you should do it. We actually, not everybody can do it at once, but annually we believe companies ought to have that updated. How you do it, we have a five-step process, and we've even seen the value of that. And it's our vision, along with uh, many of the, our advisory board, is that ultimately, ultimately, every listed company, every listed company in the US, every company that has publicly traded debt, 
would have a long-term plan. May not all present them here, but through our template and other ways can help to provide that. Uh, going forward, we're in the process of scaling up. This is our eighth CEO investor forum. We'll continue to do the world-class events. We're announcing our ninth CEO investor forum will be this day, a year from now, um, this Monday. We're gonna start doing them by industry. The, the network, the, the long-term uh, plan framework we've talked about in terms of best practices. Also for companies that are interested and, and let us know, you can contact uh, uh, Nundaka, who's leading our effort force at CCP. We just had a workshop this morning. Tomorrow we have a workshop with energy and utility companies in partnership with EY to help us to advance those. Uh, we, the other analyses that we can help companies do. We want to thank the team at Tata Consulting Services um, in Syria and, and his group who is providing an online platform so we can house these plans, which we'll be launching later this year and into next. And certainly we've done a lot of custom coaching with companies. So there is a platform there to really help companies to be effective as we, uh, we move forward. And probably the best thing we'll do is to hear from those CEOs. We have a bunch of CEOs who will be sharing their long-term plans this afternoon. So we look forward to those and really appreciate their efforts and preparation to share where they're headed. Uh, we'll also hear from Rebecca Henderson at Harvard Business School to recap uh, the day. Uh, and uh, before that, though, we're really delighted to have a panel of business roundtable. How many people have seen the business roundtable statement? Right? Uh, virtually everybody okay? Um, we have a panel of signees who are gonna be joining me here shortly, who are gonna share kind of why they sign, what the implications are, we'll answer some questions from the group uh, coming up. And we believe this is the first time many of the CEOs have been contacted by individual investors and had conversation, but this is the first time we've had a broader based discussion about the business roundtable statement, what it means, what companies are looking at. So with that, it is my honor to introduce uh, Joaquin from, uh, from J&J who will be our moderator, and he'll introduce uh, our panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.